The last few weeks have been a roller coaster of emotions for just about everyone. The newspaper headlines and gossip and social media certainly doesn't help. Many of us find the days a constant shift between mind-numbing isolation and headlines that create fear, making it hard to concentrate on just about anything. But it's also a time of new heroes, like Dr. Bonnie Henry, who every morning gives us the latest numbers as well as the encouragement to stay the course, keep our social distancing, and if we can, just stay home. For me, home is Safferton, one of the older neighborhoods in New Westminster. In the 10 years that I've lived here, I've up to now found it to be a fairly lively place with a welcome scattering of small mom and pop businesses. But lately, that feeling has changed. All along Columbia Street are signs posted on small businesses that dot the landscape telling stories of their own. Some give us hope for returning, some encouragement to our fellow citizens, and many are admissions that we're all simply trying to find our own way to cope. The streets of Sapperton are empty these days, with just a few hardy souls, often healthcare workers, taking a well-earned break from the war zone that's become our hospitals. While we may be living through the curse of interesting times, you can't help but be aware that we're in the midst of history. And while the words and deeds of the big public figures will be recorded in the history books about this time, what about the rest of us? I was curious about how we could record the everyday lives of our own town, New Westminster. How is our community finding its way through this pandemic of the 21st century? I started by asking my own doctor, Dr. Wynne. We discussed how his medical practice is dealing with the need for social distancing and how the pandemic is affecting him, both as a physician and as an individual. We began with a discussion of the rise of online meetings, including for doctor's appointments to do this in order to um, practice our social distancing to some extent and making sure that our vulnerable patients don't get exposed when they don't need to be. Um, it uh, has been a, a really good thing, I think, for a lot of patients. Um, I think uh, they've felt comfortable because they've been at home. Um, they've been able to, uh, in many cases where we don't need to physically examine them, um, sort of get the support that they need uh, without having to leave that environment. And I think it's appropriate for a lot of conditions. Uh, there are some things where it's, where it's not so appropriate, where we have to do physical examination um, for certain conditions. But overall, uh, I think that uh, it's been uh, helpful, and I think patients really like it. Since I had heard there may be supply problems down the road with many things, including prescription medicine, I asked what he thought of people stocking about two to three months ahead. So in terms of medications and stocking about medications, I think that it's a very challenging thing to sort of discuss because we just don't know what the situation is like week to week. Um, I think it's prudent if we're trying to sort of isolate at home um, or try to avoid a con contact in the outside to, you know, have a supply of medications, particularly if you have prescription medications, you know, making sure that uh, you have a supply for a couple of months um, sort of available to you. And uh, if it's in terms of over-the-counter medications, I mean, I, you know, things like Tonal or other things that might be helpful for, uh, to help with symptoms of a cold or COVID-19, uh, it's good to have a supply of those, although we have to be judicious because, you know, uh, we have found that uh, just like the toilet paper problem, um, people have started to buy things out whenever, you know, they hear that we need this medication to treat it, and that causes other people to sort of not be able to access those medications. Um, as a medical doctor, uh, through this sort of COVID-19 challenge that we're facing, um, I think it's really important to recognize that, you know, all of us, I mean, even, even myself as a physician, you know, we are all under stress. And, uh, you know, it's a trying time for all of us. And we need to be open and make sure that sort of, that we understand how we feel inside and we don't sort of let that, you know, take over, uh, you know, what we do. Like we, 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 we you know, we, it's, it's fine to be worried. Um, you know, we should try to support each other in that and, uh, you know, make sure that all our, our needs are met uh, and share things. So with COVID-19, the most abnormal thing I did today was, well, I mean, I came into the office as I would on every day, and um, I have seen a single patient in person all morning. And that was just a bit surreal to, to, to go through that and just realize I've been sitting at a desk looking at a computer all morning and not actually talking to somebody, uh, you know, in physical form, face to face. That was... 
but we are all much more than just our jobs, even if you're a doctor. I asked him how his life was different, beginning with what he thought was the most selfish thing he did today. I, like, so this is the first time in my career which, you know, uh, I've really felt that something has been, you know, threatening to those who are really close and around me, like, you know, my family, my, you know, my wife, um, you know, my, my parents in particular, and, you know, it's caused me to sort of say, hey, well, you know, I've got to make sure that they're taken care of, and I mean, that kind of even trumps to some extent what I'm thinking about with my own patients, I, you know, and that's, you know, I, there's no way to get around that, I mean. Um, I think one of the things that was really great is that in this time period we've noticed in our office, you know, we've just sort of come together as a group. I mean, we, we own our own practice, and you know, but we don't necessarily interact in such a close way, to, uh, you know, every day. But you know, we've been meeting up, we've been co well coordinated, uh, we've sort of been able to be open about our concerns about what's going on, and sort of really get this sort of uh, change going so that we can adapt and make sure that we're prepared for what's going on. You know, between our, our, our medical office staff and the other physicians, sort of we're understanding more about each other's lives and sort of knowing what's concerning each of us. Yeah. But change, as they say, is inevitable. The changes we now see as a result of COVID-19 could have long-lasting effects. I asked him what changes he thought may remain. I think of a few things that could change um, following this. From a physician standpoint, for sure, this sort of the, the idea of doing virtual visits, I mean, that's, this, this has cemented the idea that we need to have this. And I mean, it's, it's beyond just not having contact and sort of being isolated. But it's, I think it's just important as technology moves forward that we sort of adapt to those. So that's definitely changed and, and it's not coming back. Um, you know, going, we're not going to go back to just purely physical visits because it just doesn't make sense for some people to, to, to be treated in that way. So the question remains, how will New West move through this pandemic? Are we prepared both mentally and medically? How are you doing? Are you taking walks through your favorite places? Are we finally going to stop panicking and perhaps find our better selves? We all find peace in our own ways and I hope you're finding yours. Next week will be the start of our Zoom interviews, so be sure to check in with New West TV often. I leave you now with the words of hockey legend, Ken Dryden. For all of us who don't know, we can read what we want to read, believe what we want to believe, hope what we want to hope, say what we want to say, eloquently, beautifully, compellingly, persuasively. Presidents, prime ministers, dictators. We can blog, tweet, post, proclaim, reach thousands, millions. We can want what we want, do what we want. COVID-19 is not impressed. Stay safe out there. See you soon.